Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you back. I welcome you to Data TV. This program to some. Uh, my name is Mugabe Godfrey from Mengeses, and uh, today we are going to continue. I know this is not the first time to be here, and I know I remember that last time when we met, I last gave some assignment some home assignment for some of our members of senior four and the other members of senior three senior two i gave you that assignment which i which most of you did and you sent thank you so much for watching data tv and uh, for learning with us then uh, as we know that uh, you as you at home uh, stay tuned and at the same time call out all the SOPs, the standard the operating procedure, the washing hands, social distancing, at the same time putting on your masks at home. Please let us all do that so that we can avoid the contraction of, uh, uh, contraction of this virus, COVID-19 uh, COVID, uh, virus. Uh, thank you so much. So today we are going to continue uh, we're going to have a senior three topic and we're going to discuss some good number of questions in that senior three topic and that is going to be locomotion. Uh, but in uh, briefly, for those colleagues who have not handled the term locomotion, so we're going to look at senior four, biology. We can look at all of biology, it can be senior theory biology because we are at home so we are expecting you to learn with us so senior field biology and in that case we're going to look at a topic called, uh, some questions on a topic called the local motion so uh, is, uh, as we look at that topic local motion we simply look at how uh, different organisms move from uh, one place to another. The movement of the whole organism from one place to another. So locomotion uh, simply refers to to movement of a whole organism from one place to another. Then, if you look at locomotion, we know that uh, in some cases, people are confusing it with the movement. However, movement, it's not the same as locomotion. Movement simply refers 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 to displacement displacement of the part of an organism from one part or from one place we can refer to that from one place to another. Now, if we have understood those two uh, uh, different words that are used in biology, if we look at locomotion, we are move, the whole organism is moving from one place to another. But now in, when we look at the uh, movement, simply I can look at one part of me. This is the hand. Then I displace it from one part to another, but when the whole organism has remained in the same place. So you have to look at that one, okay? Then uh, we are going to look at locomotion in different organisms. How do different organisms move? But we're going to discuss uh, questions, one question at a time, okay? So can we look at how locomotion in a fish? Some questions uh, which are about locomotion in a fish. Good. 
locomotion in what? In a fish. Uh, so you, we can clean off this. Uh, let's look at locomotion. Locomotion in a fish. Some questions which are in locomotion in a fish. Okay, so when look at the fish, as it is locomoting, as it is moving, uh, it consists of the mus muscle blocks that are located on either sides of the fish, on either side of the fish's body. And these uh, muscle blocks, we always call them the myotomes. Now, these myotomes are always contracting. Now, for example, if myotomes on one side of the fish contracts, the myotomes on the other side of the fish, they relax. Now, when this alternative contraction and relaxation uh, take a place, what will happen is that the, the, the where the myotomes have contracted from, that's where the fish's body will, more, will, will, will uh, bend towards. And then when myotomes on the other opposite side contract, also the fish's body is going to face that side. So the movement, the contraction and relaxation of these myotomes on the fish's body, they are going to cause this, uh, this organism to move forward by the help of these fins which are located on the fish body. So, however, we have what we call uh, we have what we call instabilities in a fish. So should we look at the first question? Uh, state different ways. Question number one, part A. State. State different ways. Ways. By which. by which a fish may lose may lose stability okay different ways in which the fish uh, may lose stability now those are the different instabilities in a fish number one we have we have pitching. Number two, we have roaring. And number three, we have yawing. Those are the different instabilities in a fish. What is pitching? Pitching simply refers to the tendency of the fish's head. Uh, to plank downwards as the fish is mo moving. For example, as you see, some of the, <coughs> the fish is moving, but it's moving downwards. But, so, but uh, look at the head. The head of the fish will be planking, will be moving da downwards. So we look at it, that he is the tendency, tendency of the, <coughs> fish's head to plank downward downwards as the fish moves okay then that is a uh, pitching. Then number two, we have roaring. What is roaring? Roaring. Roaring. That is the rotation of the fish's body about its horizontal axis. For example, you can see that the fish is moving. This is its, it's moving in a horizontal direction. Then the fish may be rotating like this 
or it may be rotating from the posterior from the anterior view so you may find that this part of the fish is moving like this it is rotating like this or the face the the, the anterior view the head of the fish is rotating around like this so that is the uh, the rotation of the fish's body uh, about its horizontal axis rotation of the fish's body about about the horizontal axis okay then now uh, the last one we have yawing we have yawing what is yawing now yawing simply refers to the uh, the the tendency of the fish's head to move to side to side due to side to side movement of the, ta the tail you look at the fish's body as it is moving side to sorry the fish's head it is moving side to side due to the movement of the oh, sorry due to the side to side movement of the ta the tail so movement of fish's head side to side due to side to side movement of which one of the tail so you look at that this when the fish is carrying out these movements the, these types of movements you may find that the fish is is not stable so it has to be stabilized we have some fins in a fish that are responsible for controlling all these instabilities so let's look at them the different fins which are responsible for controlling instabilities in a fish good so let's look at equation number two sorry part b as you're writing that part uh let's look at part b uh state state the fins responsible responsible for doing what for each of the following for preventing for preventing each of the following following instabilities stated above okay so uh, you're going to state the different fins which are responsible for preventing each of the following instability that you have stated above uh, number one we have seen uh, pitching how pitching is being controlled okay how um, how can the fish control the, the the instability of rolling how can the fish control the instability of uh, yawing okay so let's look at those ones different fins which are responsible for that different fins okay so number one we can see pitching is controlled by by which one by paired fins 
Examples of such paired fins we have such as which one are paired fins? We have the pectoral fins because they are two. One is located on each side of the body. Then, and we have the pelvic fins. Those ones are the paired fins which are controlling the instability of pitching. Then, number two, we have rolling. Rolling. Rolling as in an instability, it is controlled by uh, the different fins, but these ones are unpaired fins. Uh, such examples of the unpaired fins, we have the dorsal fin, we have the anal fin, we have which it could be the ventral fin, and then we may be having the, uh, the, the, the cuddle fin or the tail fin. That one, it is, could be used in controlling the process of ro rolling. So, uh, the next uh, part, which I want you to do some research, I want you to describe, uh, to describe how a, a fish's body swims from Roman 1, from a low level to a high level. So, I want you to do that exercise as we are coming from a short break have a good uh, have a good break okay i welcome you back from that short break i thank you so much for watching us and even learning and tuning data tv uh, i know my colleagues you are watching and that is mr maiga you watching mr nakapanka thank you for watching thank you so much mr uh, my headmaster, Mr. John Fred Kaziwe, thank you so much. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, roaring, we have seen, that is the dorsal, it is controlled by the dorsal fin, and it is also controlled by the ventral fin, or the anal fin, and even it can. Now, the fish's body, uh, we look at that it is uh, it has a larger mass now we expect that larger mass to make it to be denser than water therefore it has to go to deeper layers of water then in some cases you may find that it has to go to higher levels of water okay for let's say picking oxygen because in the deeper layers of water there is no oxygen in higher con concentration therefore it has to come on the surface of water to pick some oxygen and even some uh, plant materials for eating because most of the plants are living on the top of wo water then uh, we look at the next part uh, how do you think the fish's body is swimming from low level to high level now, this one can be done by different methods. Number one, we look at uh, the, 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 the swim bladder. The swim bladder is the one, uh, oh, in some case, in some country, sorry, some parts of Uganda, you're calling it a noni. Yeah, that one. So it can be used for adjusting uh, depth in water by the fish because it can, when it goes down, if it takes in water, sorry, air, into the swim bladder, this, it is going to make it less, less denser than water. And therefore, the, the fish's body is going to float on water. So we look at it that by taking in, by taking in more air, more air into the swim to allow water to pass under them mm -hmm. creating 
an upthrust upthrust forcing the fish forcing the fish to move upward so what happens also is that these pectoral fins they are all we can see all the paired fins they are going to be held at an angle so that they can allow uh, water to pass under them now when water is passing under them it creates a certain upthrust force that is going to force this sea uh, fish to move upwards so if you look at it it can be done in such a way then uh, if even you look you, we can look at the question number two Roman two moving you can even look at Roman the next one moving from a high level to a low level now when the fish's body is moving from a high level to a low level what do you expect that is by taking in less air which makes uh, into the swim bladder that makes it uh, heavier or denser than water becoming uh, becoming less buoyant and therefore the fish's body is going to move the downwards or oh, these pectoral fins or the PRD fins are going to be held uh, they are not going to be held at any angle so they are going to lie onto the body when they lie onto the body they reduce uh, the upthrust force making it to move downward so we look at you can also look uh, write that one uh, down on your own okay so it is given as an assignment on your own. So we look at Loman 2. We look at Loman 2. On Loman 2, we, lo we have when the fish's body is moving forward. So Loman 2. forward what happens when the fish's body is moving uh, forward now this it is going the fish is going to push these pectoral fins these paired fins uh, forward and even backwards now when these ones are pushed forward and even backward they create what we call the forward thrust force that is making the fish to move for forward. So we look at it. <coughs> we look at it. It pushes. It pushes the cuddle all tail fin fin. against against water against water alternatively or we can say alternately all side to side movement movement of the cuddle fin which provides provides the forward last force the forward last force uh, for the movement of the tail so for forward 
movement. Now what happens is that uh, the, uh, the fish's body is going to be pushed uh, forward by the al uh, alternate movement of the tail or side to side movement of the tail. The tail will be moving side to side. Now as it moves side to side, it will uh, create what we call the, th uh, the forward thrust force that makes this fish to start moving for forward. At the same time, you can give an alternative that uh, look at the, the, the paired fins. Even paired fins can be held uh, at a certain angle. When they appear at a certain angle, they are going to be made to move forward and even uh, down, uh, sorry, backward. And as they are moving forward and backward, it creates an, a forward thrust force that is making this fish to move for forward. So look at all these alternatives that you can give. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, you can also look at the next part. Part D. Part D. I know we are writing. Part D. This uh, state the adaptations. State the adaptations of the fish of the fish for locomotion. How is the fish adapted for locomotion? Okay, or oh, adapted for swim for swimming. We can also put swimming how is the fish adapted for swimming so you look at this uh, in different books you may find uh, when you look at the fish from external features that it has and then you go even inside the inside the fish and then you look at some of the features that are facilitating it to locomote or to survive during swi swimming because uh, now here i'm going to look at the external features first then i go inside i look at also some other features out together members okay then uh if you look at the external features that are making a fish to swim in water there are very many now you look at the fish's body we have already talked about the, the fins, okay? How are these fins facilitating the, sw the process of sw swimming in water, okay? So you look at all that, members. So the first one which we can look at, I can look at the, str uh, the, sw the streamline body of the fish. Uh -huh. Streamlining means one part of the body of the fish is uh, tapering and even the other part is also tapering okay streamline the body that one only it allows or it reduces friction during sw swimming if you look at all the organisms that are in different media where where locomotion is taking place they have this uh this streamline the body for reducing friction during what during swimming so we we'll look at number one now we are writing answers of this question number one fish has a stream lined body to do what to reduce, reduce friction, friction during swimming. Swimming in what? Swimming during swimming in wo water. Okay. Then uh, you can look at even some other points. Look at the external features that the fish is having. It has a lateral line. What is the importance of the lateral line? 
okay look at the importance of the lat line on the screen uh you can look at the different fins that are provided okay you can look at the diff the lat line which is passing in the middle that lat line is very important in doing what in detecting sound vibra vibration and that is very important in detecting enemies within uh, within the water or within the lake area where the fish is really living so we can say has a lateral line for doing what the lateral line is used to detect changes to detect changes in water changes in sound vibration in sound vibrations uh-huh then so uh, and even not only sound vibrations and even the pressure pressure what changes members as the fish is moving in water you may find that one part of water is having higher amounts of water oh the fish has moved to deeper layers of water therefore it has let's say to change the, the the depth of water therefore it has to first find the pressure of water and therefore it can move to the favorable pressure you may find that the fish is in in a lot of waves okay whereby these waves are uh, they, they are they are they are having a lot of pressure therefore it has to move there are some fish which are surviving in such areas and there are some fish which are not surviving in such areas so you look at it well okay then you can also look at the next one uh, you can also look at another one uh, look at the fins has the fins these fins are used for movement or for stability Mm -hmm. has the fins for movement movement all used for controlling instabilities you look at them uh, we have seen different fins the pectoral fins which are used in controlling instabilities like the pitching okay look at it then we have seen even all the paired fins used in controlling the pitching then we have seen the unpaired used in controlling the uh, the process of ro rolling so you look at these areas members then you can also look at another one look at the swim bladder has a swim bladder this is swim bladder is used for what it is used for controlling the uh, the depth or used for depth depth adjustment adjustment in wo in water so we have seen how the swim bladder is used during depth adjustment whereby some of this some of the uh, when it takes in water, sorry, air, it will become less denser than water. And therefore, it has to move to the upper layers of water where it can obtain, let's say, maximum oxygen for respiration to take a place. Okay? Then, uh, we have seen this for, de uh, for depth adjustment in wo water. Then, uh, another one we have seen, we can look at the eyes. It has large eyes those large eyes are used for what they are providing for providing for providing a wide range of vision of view of view 
and if it has a wide range of view, it can easily detect obstacles for detecting obstacles in what? In water. So it, uh, it has a, uh, large eyes. These large eyes, look at them. Uh, they are found. Where are they found? They are, an, they are at the anterior view, but uh, they are located on sides. They are laterally located. Now, being laterally located, the, it increases the wide view of uh, it increases the wide range of vision for these animals to see uh, all obstacles in water that's why you see fish as it moves in water it cannot it cannot uh, collide with any obstacle in water because these eyes are going to be used to see whatever that is found in water okay so you look at it well then uh, we have number two, the body is covered by a thin body is covered by a thin layer, by a thin layer of which one? Of mucus, of mucus that reduces water resistance that reduces water resistance now if you look at it here uh, if you look at its body the body it is having the mucoglands these mucoglands are very important in secreting mucus that muc that's why when you touch the fish's body it is somehow slim slim uh, or slimy uh, because of that mu mucus layer which is covering the, the fish. That one only, it is one uh, assisting the fish in escaping from predators. At the same time, it is assisting the fish in uh, reducing water resistance. So I want you to add on until when we can get like a 20 or even 15 points. Okay, so as we are coming from a short break, uh, let us let us continue memorizing or uh, look uh, searching for different uh, adaptations of a fish for swimming. Have a good. I will welcome you back from that short break. I thank you so much for watching and learning with us. I thank you, my students and all students from Uganda, uh, for watching and tuning in Delta TV. Uh, that is the program to some senior four senior I know senior fours they have already gone back and therefore you have to call out the standard uh, standard operating procedures so that we can keep our lives safe from COVID-19 disease okay so members I know many people are watching. I thank you so much, people of Luvidi. Thank you so much for watching and other people in Uganda. My wife, Lydia Batenga, thank you so much for everything that you have done. Okay, let's, con let's, let's, let's go on with the, the adaptations of a fish for swimming. Uh, we, we can also discuss on the scales. Look at the arrangement of scales. Scales overlap, overlap over one another, over one another, or overlap one another, another, and the facing. Facing where? Facing posteriorly. Posteriorly. To do what? To reduce friction. 
Now, if you look at these scales, members, these scales, they are, they, are, they are all overlapping over each other. Now, if this is the fish's body, you are going to find that these scales, these scales, they are, they are facing uh, posteriorly, and each one is overlapping over each other. Okay? Now, if you look at them, they are all facing down uh, towards the back or towards the tail. And they are all facing, uh, they are all uh, overlapping over each other. No one is uh, standing on its own. Now, this, the arrangement of this, uh, these scales, it reduces the friction in that fish when the fish is sw swimming. So you look at it on the screen and look at those organisms that are provided there. Okay. Then we can look at, can we go and look at now the gills? How are the, what are the structures that are located on that, on the gills? <clears throat> uh, the gills, we look at the gill filament because it is the one which is used in mainly uh, for mainly for gaseous exchange. So we look at what it has. Okay. So gill filament is densely or gill filaments are densely densely supplied supplied with the blood capillaries capillaries to do what for efficient for efficient transportation transportation of absorbed gases for rapid rapid rate of what diffusion now what happens members is that uh, these gill filaments because the fish in order for it to swim it needs energy and that energy is coming from where from respiration as that energy is coming from respiration, we need some oxygen, which must be uh, dissolved, which must be dissolved in water. And the dissolved oxygen will diffuse into the gill filaments. Uh, then it diffuses into the blood stream, then transported to different parts of the bo the body of the fish. But as this, uh, as the oxygen diffuses. Uh, there are some uh, adaptations for allowing diffusion to take a place. Number one, we have that these gill filaments where diffusion is taking place, they are supplied with a lot of blood capillaries. And these blood capillaries are responsible for doing what? They are responsible for allowing or th for increasing the surface at which uh, at which oxygen is transported away and therefore when oxygen is transported away it increases the concentration gradient between the blood stream or within the gill filaments and even the water where the fish is located or water in the gill chamber that one only will increase the rate at which oxygen has to diffuse from where has to diffuse from the water into the bloodstream. So, a uh, presence of the gill filament, uh, which are supplied with a lot of capillaries, that one increases the rate of diffu diffusion. So, look at even some other adaptations. Numerous gill filaments. Numerous gill filaments. Numerous gill filaments, 
filament it says single L numerous gill filaments. That's the one does what? That increases increases the surface surface area surface area for diffusion diffusion of what of gases so if you look at these uh these gases sorry these gyro filaments are numerous or oh, they are many to increase the rate of what rate of diffusion uh, another one if you look at the gills they have also gill bars the gill bar and even gill raker gill rakers are responsible for what they are responsible for trapping some obstacles in wa water all together members then also if you look at the gill rakers the gill rakers and even the gill bars we have seen that they are having or they are serving the same function so we look at those different adaptations of the fish for swim for swimming in water now even look at the gill filament it is also supply sorry it is also uh, having a moist environment so the gill filaments are moist in order to to dissolve oxygen so as oxygen can enter or diffuse in the uh, dissolved form to increase the rate of what of diffusion so uh, have or has gill filaments which are moist to do what to dissolve oxygen so as to increase increase the rate of diffusion okay so you look at that that is being formed there then <coughs> uh, we can look at another question which we may discuss together uh, state the different now we go to locomotion in different animals so we are done with the locomotion in the, in the bird sorry in the fish so we can look at locomotion in any animals like uh, human beings then we shall go and look at locomotion in the in the birds so let's look at locomotion in a man locomotion in what in man so locomotion in man it is done by the action of the endoskeleton and even the attached muscles the contraction of the attached muscles so if you look at the skeleton your muscles uh, the human skeleton is made up of uh, we can simply discuss this that's it is made uh, locomotion is in man is done by two groups we have the skeleton and also we have the muscles now the skeleton that is provided there in man we can look at it that is divided into two we have uh, the appendicular skeleton and the uh, axoskeleton have axoskeleton and then we have appendicular appendicular skeleton 
Now, if you look at these two, this uh, the skeleton of man, we uh, we have seen the exoskeleton and even the appendicular skeleton. Now, if you look at these two, however, we can still divide them. The exoskeleton itself is the one that is made up of the parts of the skull. Then it's made up of the vertebral column. It's made up of the different bones that are making up the whole region, the, the, the whole horizontal region. So we have there, we have the skull. Then we have the vertebral vertebral column then we have uh, from the vertebral column we go to the ribs still they are also attached there then from the ribs we have also the sternum okay the sternum is the one which is located here that is joining the two the ribs together then uh, in the appendicular skeleton the appendicular skeleton is made up of now we look at the le the we look at the bones that are making up the limbs so we have the limbs and even we have the girdles now if you look at the limbs and the girdles these two uh, the limbs and the girdles uh, we have bones that are making up the upper limb and even the lower limb. The upper limb is, is those are the the hands. Okay, so the upper limb is made up of. So we have the upper limb. The upper limb is made up of which one? Is made up of the humerus. Humerus. Then it's also made up of, now we'll look at the bones that are making up the arm. Then we have the tip, uh, the radius and the ulna. Radius and the ulna. Then from there, you go down here, we have the tassels and meta tassels. We have the tassels and also we have the meta tassels okay then we go to the phalanges so if you look at those ones or the toes we can also discuss them then we have also the lower limb the lower limb which is made up of uh, it is made up of the lat the lateral bone here which we have as the femur then we have the lower the the one which is making up the thigh and it's the lower one which we have as the the, the tibia and the tibia and the fibra then we go to the meta uh, tarsal and even some other bones then from there, we come to the girdles. Still, the girdles are divided into two. We have the, uh, the ones which are joining the arms and the ones which are joining the legs. Okay? So, the ones which are joining the arms, we are calling them the pectoral what? Pectoral gado. Pectoral what? Gado. This pectoral girdle is made up of how many bones? It's made up of number one. It's made up of the scar, the the scapula. Uh, it's also made up of the collar bone. The collar what? Bone. Okay, so it's made up of those two bones, but it, the scapula is having different adaptations, and sometimes we they always set it in the practical because of its uh, adaptations. 
These bones we are talking about, they are almost the same as those of the chicken. And sometimes we can, they can set that one. Okay. Then uh, the category number two of the gado, which is joining the legs, which we call the pelvic what? Pelvic gado. The pelvic gado members, it is, made, it is made up of bones, but these bones are all fused together. They are all fused. These ones are separate, and they are joining at a point here, which we have as a bow and a socket what? Socket joint. So this pelvic gado we have here, it's made up of... Uh, different bones, but the bones are all fused together. The, uh, these bones are the, we have the incus, we have the medius, we, uh, we have the incus, the medius, and then we have the pubis, and even some other bones that we can discuss. Oh, we have the idiom. And then we have the ichiam. So these ones, you can leave them alone. So we have uh, four bones, the pubis, the idiom, the ichiam, and then... Uh, those bones are all fused together. And these, they, they don't have joints like that, some other bones. However, they have some holes at the end which are articulating with the head of the femur. And those holes, we call them the oseta blatter. The oseta blatter. Okay, so if we have seen some of these ones, can we now discuss some questions which are about locomotion in man? Okay. Let's look at some of these questions which are on locomotion in what? In man. Then category number two, as we said, we have the muscles. The muscles... In man, uh, you look at those mus the skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles are those muscles which are found when they are attached on the skeleton. And therefore, they are going to use the skeleton to contract against to cause forward mo movement. So if you look at these muscles, uh, you can, uh, we shall discuss them uh, when we get more time. So let's look at number one, question number one, part, sorry, question number two, part A, state the functions, state the functions of which one? Of skeleton. Where? In mammals. In the mammals. State the functions of skeleton in mammals. We can start with that one. Uh, it is the simplest equation also. Okay. So if you look at it, number one, uh, what could be the fa different functions of skeleton? Is that skeleton, we know that man or mammals are having endoskeleton, which we have discussed. And you have seen all the bones that are found there. So what could be the different functions of the skeleton? Uh, number one, the skeleton is used to provide, so provides a framework, a framework for the body, for the body where, where body organs are held and prevented prevented 
from clashing into each other into each other now if you look at the skeleton it provides a framework where different body organs are going to be attached when the different body organs are attached on a certain uh, skeleton therefore it is that they are going to be prevented from attaching in or onto other body organ so that they don't crash they don't bump over each other so we may be having such okay then the, uh, we may look at another one that skeleton is very important in body to provide the pre, uh, protection provides protection to to delicate delicate body organs such as such as which one such as the heart uh, which one it is also protecting the liver ITC so it provides protection to different delicate body organs for example we have the heart assuming that you are running okay in most cases when you are running you are going to look at the heart is uh, as or if you follow down the heart is going to be at times it can be damaged but because of the presence of this rib cage which is providing protection to that to the heart and even the chest cavity therefore the body organs may be prote protected so as we are coming from a short break i want you to uh, go on and look at the different functions of the skeleton in mammals as we come from a short break i wish uh, you. i welcome you back from that short break i thank you so much for watching data tv the program of to so many i know uh, most of the students senior two three senior two senior one we are still uh, even senior five and even other non-candidate uh, students are still seated at home so as you are at home please call out the standard uh, standard operating procedures washing hands uh, social distancing and if you are uh, suffering from any sign please isolate yourself and you can go in quarantine and so that we can prevent or control the spread of this disease lord uh, we have seen the different uh, functions of the skeleton in mammals and then we have seen if you look at on the screen we have that uh, skeleton we are talking about those bones and uh, uh, some of you are not looking at them very well you can look at that humerus uh, the bones of the hand then you can also look at the bones uh, th that are making up the exoskeleton, the rib cage, the ribs, uh, whereby we have how many ribs? We have 12 ribs in pairs, pairs of ribs. Then which, where they are attached, they are attached on the, star, the sternum. Okay. So if you look at that structure, uh, we can give different functions of the skeleton. Okay. So number two, sorry, number three, causes locomotion. Causes locomotion as it provides, as it provides attachment, attachment or surfaces for attachment of ma muscles as it provides areas or surfaces for attachment of what of muscles 
uh, where muscles are going to contract for contracting and cause forward what movement then we have also we talk about the rib cage rib cage rib cage uh, facilitates gaseous gaseous exchange exchange how how is the rib cage facilitating gaseous exchange it adjusts the volume of the chest cavity by adjusting the volume of which one of the chest cavity when the volume of the chest cavity is adjusted it will also uh, adjust the pressure of the chest cavity therefore facilitating the process of inhalation and exhalation in man whereby uh, if you are breathing in that is the process of inhalation what happens is that uh, the external intercostal muscles uh, contract and the internal intercostal muscles relax when these two do that the rib cage will move outward and even uh, upwards which will increase the volume of the chest cavity but reducing the pressure of the chest cavity considered to that of the external env environment and that one only will facilitate air containing more of the cup of the oxygen than carbon dioxide gas to diffuse or to move from the external environment into the into the alveolus of the lungs or alveoli of the lungs via the nose tree the nose or the nose space uh, pass, uh, passing on the uh, pharynx passing on the trachea passing via the bronchi until when it ends into the alveoli of the lungs okay so you look at that the, the one which is causing that it is the presence of the rib cage that is going to either move upward or it moves it da downward then uh, we can also look at by adjusting the volume of the chest cavity and also by adjusting the flasky pressure Velasky pressure. Mm -hmm. Then we can also look at another one that ear oscos. Look at the presence. Ear oscos are also bones. Ear oscos <coughs> facilitates tets, the transmission. transmission of which one of sound of sound vibrations okay so if you look at these ear oscos they are they are responsible if you look at in the ear uh, in the ear we have the, the 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 outer part of the ear which is the pinna which is connecting to the eardrum then uh, connecting to the connecting to the ear oscos then connecting to the oval window or even round the window so what happens is that the sound vibrations or, or any wave will be collected by the pinna then the pinna will trans will collect all those one and concentrate them in that auditory canal or oh, it is going to connect them into that that tube then making the eardrum to vibrate vibrations of the eardrum are going to be transmitted into the ear oscos to vibrate examples of these ear oscos we have the incus the merius and the steps these ear oscos they vibrate and also transmit those vibrations what we call the oval 
window, making it also to, va to vibrate. Vibration of the, e the oval window will be transmitted to the cochlea, making the bacillus membrane to vibrate. So when all these membranes vibrate, it will be transmitted to endolymph. The endolymph is a fluid which is formed in the cochlea, making it also to, va to vibrate in the inner parts of the ear. So you look at these inner parts of the ear and you make them. So you look at how sound vibrations can be transmitted. Okay. Then <coughs> we have number, another one, production of blood cells. Production of blood cells. Which ones are produced? So from where? From mainly the bone marrow. These bones, they are mainly, they consist of bone marrow. Some of them are having red bone marrow and white bone marrow. So the bone, the bone marrow are used, they have precursor cells. These precursor cells are responsible for production of, of the white and the red blood cells. However, sometimes the white blood cells are produced by the lymph, by the lymph or the, 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 lymph, the lymphatic system. Okay? So t sometimes, but in most cases, it is produced by the bony marrow. Okay? But uh, production of red blood cells, you find that the bone uh, red blood cells are responsible for transportation of oxygen from one area of the body to different parts of the body for respiration. Good. So uh, we can continue still with the different functions. Uh -huh. So you can also uh, add on that it is very uh, it is also used in the storage storage of some mineral minerals or mineral salts. Mainly, we have storage of calcium ions, and also it is used in the storage of phosphate. Phosphate uh, in the, the bones. So you look at that most of the bones are responsible for storing phosphates and even uh, calcium. And now, uh, assuming that you have eaten a lot of calcium iron salts, uh, you have taken a lot of foods that are having higher concentration of calcium. Then, what happened to the body? The body must regulate the amount of calcium ions and phosphate ions within bloodstream. By doing what? The body, uh, the brain will uh, be stimulated and it produces, uh, the pituitary gland, it will be producing uh, a hormone which is calistonin. That calistonin will be the one which is responsible for regulating calcium ion is in blood. By doing what? By uh, allowing more absorption of calcium ions by the bones themselves. So bones will take up calcium, a lot of calcium, and this calcium will make that bone to be hard. Then, when calcium ions are low in bloodstream, therefore, the calistonin also will be able to allow, blood, allow bones to release some of these calcium ions into the bloodstream stream. Okay, then the last one you can look at that he, we have seen all these functions. So it provides flexible movement. Provides flexible movement. Mm -hmm. Such as, such as, 
Mm -hmm. What happens? The flexible movement is provided by the joint such as joints joints have fluid that uh, the, uh, the joints they contain fluid which reduces friction during what movement so uh, contain fluid which reduces friction friction during what during movement okay so you have seen some of the functions of uh, the skate only for locomotion can you look at question part b question part b question part b now for question part b we can say uh, without the aid of the body diagram without the aid of a diagram diagram okay what are we going to do summarize or describe describe how movement movement is caused is caused in a named in a named hing joint in a named hing joint now members if you find such a question you remember that we have a, what is a joint first of all we said a joint is a point where two or more bones meet a point where two or more bones meet if they have met at a certain point that is a joint and we have types of joints we have a joint that is allowing flexible uh, total locomotion to take a place or movement to take a place in one plane or in different planes then we have some joints that allowing partial movement like those of the skull okay then we have some joints that allowing move total movement to take a place like a, we have some which are allowing partial movement like the hinge joint then we have bow and the socket joint that is allowing movement to take a place in all of play planes then uh so examples of hinge joints so we have the hinge joint here examples of hinge joints we have the knee then we have the the joint between at the elbow so we have the elbow joint then uh, examples of ball and what and the socket joint we have number one uh, the bow and socket joint that is the one which is allowing movement in all directions so we have number one we may be having the the one which is found here at between the scapula and even the head of the humerus between the scapula and the head of which one of humerus and also we have this one here okay so uh, if they tell you 
uh, to describe how movement is caused in a named hing joint, you first name that joint you are going to talk about. Except when they have told you to give, uh, sorry, to when they have given you the, the hing joint, or they have given you the bow and the socket joint. So you have to mention it. You mention that movement at this joint first. Okay. So I have So what I have there I have a movement at the elbow elbow joint What happens members uh, this movement in human being I will say it is caused by the contraction of muscles. But these muscles are antagonistic to each other. These antagonistic muscles, where one contracts, another one will relax. So they are, they are all caused by a pair of muscles. And these muscles, they are named. For example, in the arm, we have the biceps and the, the triceps. Where one contracts the other one will relax then in the leg we have the biceps and the cordyceps we, where one contracts the other one will relax that is that is being antagonistic okay so we have uh because they told us without the use of the diagram but on the screen also we can also look at that structure which is having the, the where the ma different muscles are located in the arm. Uh, you can look at it. So what happens in here when so movement we can summarize it movement at the elbow elbow joint good. You can look at it uh, that at, at, at the elbow joint, we have different muscles which are, are organized there. We have the biceps, then we have the triceps at the back. Then we have the ulna and the radius, they are there. Then we have the humerus, it is there. So what happens, members, if you look at it at the screen, uh, is that... Uh, Movement at the elbow is always caused by this set of antagonistic muscles, the biceps and even the triceps. Now, when the muscles of the triceps or when the trice, uh, biceps muscles contract, they will become thick and they will become short, the muscle fibers. These muscle fibers, they will pull. At the same time, we shall see that the triceps muscles have relaxed. Now, when they relax, they are going to become long and even very thin. Now, what happens is that these muscle fibers of the, the biceps, after becoming short, they are going to pull the radius and even the ulna to come towards or to... Uh, they are going to be pulled towards the humerus, and therefore the arm is going to be bent at the elbow. Then, if you look at, if you look at the the movement when the arm is straightened, what will happen is that when the biceps muscles relax, they will become thin and long, but the triceps muscles will. Relax, sorry, the, bis, the triceps muscles will contract, hence becoming short and even uh, very thick. When they become thick, they are going to pull again the, the, the ulna and the radius away from the humerus, and therefore the whole arm is going to be straightened. So I want you particularly, in case they tell you that you draw Without, with the use of the label diagram, you can even simplify it and draw it on your own. You look, simply I need you to 
look at the attachment of those muscles and even the bones involved. The bones involved, I have humerus, I have radius and ulna, I have the biceps and the triceps. That's what I'm interested in. So when you are doing this search, I want you to know it well. So movement at the elbow is caused by antagonistic antagonistic set of muscles muscles uh, and sets of muscles i.e. we have which one i.e. we have the uh, uh, biceps and triceps so when the triceps muscles contract they become thick and sorry when the biceps muscles contract what happens they become uh, thick and even short uh, hence pulling the radius and the ulna towards the sorry uh, hence pulling the radius towards the humerus then when the triceps muscles contract what will happen is that uh, they will become long and thin hence uh, pull, uh, hence they are going to uh, pull the ulna away from the humerus therefore the arm is going to be straight straightened now members i want you to remain with this question okay uh, explain how each of the following each of the following types of body's feathers are adapted to their functions number 1 uh, quill feathers quill feathers then number 2 covert feathers covert feathers number 3 down feathers down feathers part b explain the factors that are contributing to the body's flight to the body's ability to fly so you look at you do all those questions and then you send them on that whatsapp number on the screen of 0775 22 please do them so that we can catch up as we discuss them i thank you so much for watching us i thank you I thank my students, thank you for watching, Deputy Chwanuka, thank you for watching, 